again uh, for one of the events that we have organized within uh, the series Design the Future. Uh, tonight we will have a very important and interesting lecture and I will introduce very shortly. Uh, the, uh, I want just to say that the previous uh, uh, seminar was very successful. We reached almost 90 uh, participants between 80 and 90 and, and tonight uh, our goal is definitely to f go over 90, so please uh, help us <laughs> in, in uh, realizing our idea. Tonight's uh, guest would require, I have to say, a very long presentation, but I will try to take up very little of your time. Don't worry. So a few words. First, I want to say that our guest, Valerio Molabito, is a very passionate uh, professor working between Italy, precisely in the Mediterranean University of Reggio Calabria, and the United States. He is teaching since almost 15 years in Penn University. But he also moves among several other countries in the world, participating in many international workshops. His teaching activity has won important prizes and awards. But above all, I, I have to say, all his students admire him as a true master. I can say this because I have really seen uh, the, the love that the students have for Valerio. Second, I want to say that Valerio is a very good architect who has established himself by winning several national and international competitions without ever giving up investigating through his projects. The most recent projects are developed uh, in the studio he founded six years ago, the, Mediter uh, the Mediterranean University spin-off APS, APS landscape. Basically, in his design work, Valerio uh, investigates uh, the inhabited space between city and landscape. Through the project, Valerio explores innovative solutions for architectural and landscape design ca capable of responding to the new objectives of ecology and sustainability. So for our field of work uh, in our master program, the reference to Valerio could be very important and stimulating. Through uh, the project, Valerio explores really interesting uh, fields in, in landscape architecture. Third, I want to say that Valerio is uh, also a very fine researcher in the field of landscape architecture, a field that he investigates not only through design and theoretical reflection, but also through the use of drawing. Uh, Valerio Morabito drawings are really beautiful. You, have, you will have the chance to see them. Uh, and to be honest, uh, I have been dreaming for years that he would give me one of his drawings. Uh, once we look at this aspect of his work, we would be tempted to look uh, at them as a result of research into the field of forms and techniques of representation that would place Valerio like other architects before him, among those who cultivate art as a parallel activity to architecture. But this interpretation is not enough, because for Valerio Morabito, drawing is above all a primary tool for founding the analytical and constructive structure of architecture, and in particular, landscape architecture. The book, he, the last book he prepared is basically a very impressive essay, as an example of this way of working. Drawing is an essential tool for a research that tackles with precision and great patience in a way, in the way Le Corbusier was using this work, which means a style of work capable of taking all the necessary time to develop. Uh, it's a research that does not renounce to engage with the problem of also composition techniques and techniques of invention in relation to the difficult task of giving shape to the transformations of space, of landscape and space. And this is an aspect of the work of Valerio Morabito 
that interested me really a lot in a moment when often the ref reference to sustainability and ecology ends up with a neo-functionalist reduction of the idea of landscape design. I think I'm done. I thank Valerio very much for having accepted our invitation and I immediately give him the floor. So please, Valerio Borabito, start to talk. Um, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Sara, to invite me for this lecture. It is a really pleasure to stay with all of you. Um, and thanks a lot for your presentation. Um, I, I definitely, I will give you uh, a big painting to thank for this presentation. So um, uh, today I would like to present uh, just two projects, and but I will arrive to, the, to, to these two projects uh, following a process of imagination. I will not speak what imagination is. I don't want to explain what imagination is, but what, what I will try to do is to give you examples of how the imagination can be improved, how to exercise to, to, to improve and enhance our imagination. So uh, uh, I will start with my with my presentation and okay. Done. So, uh, I I I put this this title city source of imagination. It is not just only about city, but city is the main uh, uh, landscape. I really like to investigate, to research, to understand, and I think city is really source of imagination if we think. See, it is like a very dynamic uh, uh, organism. So, imagine for me is imagining about abstracting and extracting. What it means abstracting and extracting. I will try to tell you uh, during the, the during this conversation. So. Uh, in in my in my presentation, I will put some books. I think they are very important in all my process of in all my process of thinking and doing things. One is Paul Klee, and this book is a beautiful book, The Journey to to, to Tunisia. He went to Tunisia in 1944 uh, 14 and he started his career as a Nabisat painter from this uh, uh, trip. And another one I really like very much is Yves Tanguy. And I discovered this small book that I think it is a masterpiece. It is a book made by two or three pages. It is about a poem. And this poem was mm, uh, represented with some beautiful uh, peach, uh, some beautiful drawings from Eve uh, Tangi. Sleep, sleep on the stones. And I think there, are, there is a kind of relationship between these drawings made by Eve Tangi and, and, and von Humboldt. And this book, The Invention of Nature, it is a beautiful book in which you can read the, the, the story of his life. It is an incredible, beautiful book. He met Goethe, and I think it was very important for him to understand that nature is not just nature, but it is a kind of beautiful uh, thing to imagine, represent, cultivate, and research. Ecology starts from, from him. So having this, this kind of short introduction, I would like to speak why I think it is important, mapping and painting. And I started to do this many years ago when I went to Tunisia, south of Tunisia, and for the first time I experienced the desert, the, the shadow of the desert. And then when I 
when I came back from Tunisia to Italy, I spent almost two years to understand how to represent this this thing. I tried to do many drawings in which I, I really tried to represent the desert like it was, but then I understood that it was not possible. So I did this kind of painting uh, it is a, an oil painting in which I started to represent the, the desert, not like it is, but what the invisible essence, the invisible soul of the desert was for me. And then in Tunisia, there, was, there were these beautiful sewer. These are cities, uh, small fortified cities uh, on top of mountains. And then I decided that it was necessary to paint this beautiful landscape. And I imagine uh, to, to draw this, uh, uh, this kind of uh, mirage uh, in the desert with these cities on, the, on top of mountains made by this very regular structure. And then I started to do the same thing for many other cities. This is Venice. Probably you, you don't understand why it is Venice, but this, the idea was to not to represent again Venice like it was, because no, the, there are many other artists much better than me who did this. So I, it was impossible for me to compete in this way. So I tried to represent Venice in another way. So the city, the right part of the painting is the city. Then there is a kind of strange relationship between the city and the water. And this passage is made by this uh, cities that uh, disappear in, into the water step by step. Greece, when I was in, in Greece during the summer, uh, it was, the, there was an incredible sound of cicadas. And for me, this, this was the landscape of Greece, and then I try to represent this this kind of sound, this kind of uh, landscape, and I did in my personal pentagrams in which I put the notes of this landscape. Landing to Casablanca, I saw an incredible range of different browns colors, and when I when I went back to to Italy, I decided to draw this beautiful landscape I saw from the airplane. It is not exactly the same what I saw, but that is the passage between representing and imagination. And then after this first paintings I did, I started my PhD, uh, my PhD and I met this man, James Corner, with his book, Taking Measures Across American Landscape. And I, um, I focused my PhD on this idea of mapping and extracting, extracting and abstracting information from the landscape, especially the landscape uh, seen from above. And I did this research, this PhD research, in which I tried to explain why, in my opinion, abstract art helped us in the past, especially, uh, uh, yes, in the middle of the, the last centers, how the abstract art helped us to understand the beauty of this landscape we can see from above. And so I continued to, to abstract, cut uh, the, the um, uh, landscape I saw from, from my, uh, uh, these, are, these are not my photos. Uh, so I use these photos to, uh, how to say, exercise my hand to understand how to abstract lines phrases from this landscape and creating a kind of a vocabulary. So three books after my PhD, three books, no, after my PhD, but I can say three books are very important in my, in my process. One is this, probably it is very well known, Six Memos Among Architects and Landscape Architects. 
I like very much this book because he really explained technically how to represent our imagination and how to use traces we can find around our world environment to create our imagination. So Italo Calvino, six memos for the next millennium and complexity and contradiction in architecture. I love this book. For the first time, there was someone telling me that architecture was not perfect. And there, there were a lot of imperfections in the process of imagine and build architecture. This is not an architect. This is an historian. He is Mark Bloch. He was the first one who say that the, the history is not made only by big events, an emperor trying to invade another uh, country, uh, a king uh, killing someone else and all these things. He said these are not so important. The important things in history are about traces. When you, you have an accumulation of traces, when you discover traces, then you can understand much better why that kind of event, because that kind of event happened. So this is another important uh, book. I, I, and it is an apology of history. <laughs> And it was, it is a beautiful book. So after this experience, I continued to take traces. So uh, when I visited places, I took traces. I understood which kind of small symbols I can steal from one city, from another city. So that was something I did. Uh, I do, I did, and I do. Each time I visit, and another place each time I read another book because reading a book is visiting a place. So, and I decided to collect uh, the, all, these traces in this book, The City of Imagination. The title was suggested by Richard Weller, who is the chair of Landscape uh, of the Department of Landscape Architecture at New Penn. And after mm, having this title, I started to collect traces from many different cities and I developed these traces to imagine, to represent, to invent some cities. So we, we have many different kinds of cities, city, city of ground, city of sage, city of earth, bridge, ornament, landscape, square, water, parks, trees, time. I will show some of them, not many. And for example, this, this, the city, I, I decided to do this city after visiting the High Line in New York. The idea that the trees can be elevated from the city and the city can be protected from the landscape, I was thinking it was a good metaphor in this drawing. Or this is a collection of many little sketches, doodles, uh, traces I stole, I still, I have stolen in many, many, many different years. And then I really like to collect this, all these things in one only drawings. And in this way, you can build your own idea of city and landscape. Visiting Edinburgh and, uh, 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 no, Edinburgh is a city with a city underground. So when I came back to Italy, I decided to, to draw the city underground, and I, but I cannot repeat the city of Edinburgh like it was, but I was thinking about this medieval city with this uh, up and down, uh, up and into the ground. So I decided to do this, this kind of city. Mapping New York, these are some maps I did uh, after visiting, uh, after visiting, uh, after 
after two years I visited New York, two or three years, because sometimes I have to spend time to understand how to represent something, how to imagine something. And this is another collection of many different sketches I did in New York. And then I decided to collect all these drawings in just one. And that was this, the city surprised me. When I saw the city, I said, this is not something I wanted to do, but I like very much. Or Philadelphia, this is Philadelphia, some maps of Philadelphia. And I spent a lot of time to represent the, the, the squares of Philadelphia. The, 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 in Philadelphia, the squares are very important. And there is one, especially one, where I usually go that is called Rittenhouse Square. And I spent years to understand how to do this, this square, how to represent the squares. And I did this in this way. So the colors of brown bricks, the the um, uh, imperfection of buildings that stay together in a very strange way and this the canopy of the trees into the square that are beautiful but <clears throat> this year i decided to to draw something about fez i did this drawings just last year but i visited fez probably five or six years ago. And I decided to use Fez to imagine a city made by ornament, made by trees, made by fountains, courtyards, and so on. And working on this book, I really like to, to read this, this, this book, especially Design is Invisible, a short uh, writing in which he explained how to see the invisible things of design. This is a nice book I read. And then these are two books. They are just only in Italian. The the born of the the imperfect borns of things. So things ha something happens because it is imperfect because it is not perfect. So when something is not perfect. It, it evolves, it evolves. And I really love this, big, this book that is Imperfection, a natural history or story. In Italian, the, 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 the title is, it, it is quite ambiguous. Telmo Piovani, and it is beautiful to understand how we uh, developed species, developed, improved, not just because they had to pass from point A to point B, but because many things can happen dur during the evolution. And in some specific points, traces, contingencies, create the, a moment in which the imperfect things can change. And this is the, the history of our, of our planet, universe. And I really like to understand what imperfection is in our uh, landscape. This is Mat Mata, this an invisible city. You, you go to into Ma, 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 uh, you go to visit Mat Mata and you don't see anything, just holes into the into these clay eels. Because the, 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 the people excavated the hills to survive to the very strong heat during the summer. And now if you go there, you can see just only these holes. It is an incredible, beautiful landscape. Or visiting Prague, the day after, no, the same day I visited Prague, I started drawing this idea to create void and uh, empty. Uh, 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 so there was this idea to recreate the space when you are outside of the city or when you enter into the cathedrals. So outside you have a void and inside of this cathedral, you have a different kind of void. So how to represent it? And then after these two drawings, I started to plan to, to, to map uh, Prague in my mind. I was in Guangzhou one time and in this city, in this Chinese South city, it is near Shenzhen, uh, 
so this the, the seed is is incredible because there is a really strong competition between trees and and buildings. Uh, so and the buildings want to conquer spaces that buildings want to maintain. And then there is this kind of strange, strong competition. Or I like to imagine the visionary uh, architectures made by uh, Boulet and with this very beautiful precision in which trees are very well combined with architecture. But after many years, these trees grew a lot and became the, 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 the real uh, strong uh, um, element in, into, the, into this perfect city, created imperfection, modifying this perfection to, to live the this, this city alive, to create this a city alive. And this is, uh, this is a drawing about uh, time, the consistency of time. The last, uh, the last memos that Calvino wanted to write was consistency, but he wasn't able to write this uh, uh, memos because he died. But I like to use consistency because in a way you have, you are free to understand what he could put into this lecture into this memos he didn't he didn't write so this is a this is a drawing connected with this idea of consistency related to calvino and i call all these drawings verbal drawings what it means verbal drawings oh sorry what it means verbal drawing the elementary i i read this i read this book the elementary structure of art and, and, and Anati, this, this author, uh, collected more than one million of drawings made into the caves during the Repressian arts or in, in, on the rocks and so on and so on. He, he said, I really can recognize a common language that all humans had in the entire play, uh, planet during that period, before inventing language, before inventing words, he really thought that there was a language. And this language with some particular specific grammar and syntax were made by pictograms, ideograms, and psychoideograms. So pictograms is in a way, pictograms are the landscape, the landscape we can see and we can select and we can abstract. Ideograms ha is how we react to this landscape. In this case, we, we, uh, we have arrows because this is, uh, in the past, they painted a lot of scenes about hunting, hunting activities and so on and so on. So this is ideograms, how we react to the landscape. And what I really like from, from this theory of pictograms, ideograms, and psychoideograms are the psychoideograms. So you know, in the past, they painted this, this beautiful drawings, paintings, and they decided where to, to paint in relationship to the humans that had to see this, this paintings and in relationship of the deities, gods living into the rocks. So this is this psychoideograms that doesn't represent anything, just a transcendental idea to connect the outside of rocks to the inside of rocks. So this is a key, a key to open invisible uh, environments, invisible landscape, invisible design, if you want. And we can have many of this, and the, it, the, 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 and everywhere in the planet, these drawings are the, the same, these drawings, paintings are the same in China, in South America, and in Europe, in Africa, and everywhere in that period, they use it does to speak each other, to transmit something, to transmit experiences. 
using a precise grammar, say Anadi, and I love this theory, using the same grammar to explain, to, to speak, to narrate something, and not just to draw. These are not drawings or paintings to be seen, but you, we really need to read them. So what it means to use these verbal drawings for design? Uh, the, I like to use maps of ideas. This is something I, I, we do in our office and we do, I do with my students. What is the, the maps of ideas? The map, uh, just a few examples. This is a competition in, in, in north of Italy, but this is not important. So when we design a, a, a map of idea, we use this very simple technique. So a pictogram, the landscape like this, the quality of the landscape. We don't want to change the landscape like it is. But so this is our pictogram. Then we have ideograms. So these ideograms are elements we introduce in the landscape to change our activities or to improve activities or to form activities or to share activities. And then we have the psychoideograms and these psychoideograms are the elements, the design elements we add to the landscape to understand how we can create another imperfection in this landscape. And it means to evolve the, this landscape in a way. And all these elements are not just formal elements. They are part of the existing landscape. We went inside of this landscape and we try to understand which was the best shape to use to create this map of idea. And we do this for many other competition. We, so in this case, the, land, the, the pictogram we are just the existing uh, roads. We are in Sardinia and we didn't want to change anything from this beautiful landscape. So we just use uh, the existing uh, uh, path, the existing roads, and we just change it a little bit them and we give them, we gave them a different meaning. And so we, then we added activities and then we added our psychograms and we repeat this technique so a map is not just a map to understand what we see but the map we uh, think about is a map involving the existing landscape and what is the invisible design we have to discover we have to point out we have to show and we repeat many times the same technique we like to I like to, uh, I like very much to, to speak through drawings. Those this maps are not just only drawings to be seen, but are drawings in which we really have to, to read the story. We really have to read words. We really have to understand the grammar that is part of the design process. That, is, that was another competition in near Naples. And this, this, we had to do the stupid landscape like this along this waterfront without any quality. This waterfront didn't have any quality. The urban structure was um, one of these anonymous Italian um, um, suburbs. So, how how to do this this landscape? It was it was simple for us because we had many important uh, points in the water. This is the volcano, the um, um, the volcano in Naples. Uh, okay, I don't remember the, the name of the volcano, but we started from this point and then we understood. Uh, Vesuvio, the Vesuvio. This from this Vesuvio, we took those lines, and these lines were direct to these uh, four important elements, uh, four important points: Capri, 
Ischia, Procida, and Sorrento. So we took some elements from all these uh, from all these points, and we used these elements to create four, five. This is uh, this is sort of, this is Naples. This direction is Naples. We use this uh, uh, the the uh, the, uh, the traces we could take from these places to make four important gardens so people when they they can walk along this they could stop here and receive this information about capri about sorrento and so on here we are in alicante this 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 is in uh, uh, mapping the landscape how it is and in the same time checking if our idea about this waterfront we have to redevelop 30 kilometers of this landscape uh, and we we wanted to we want to check the 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 if our idea with uh, nodes uh, could work inside of the landscape so maps for us mapping for us is not just mapping the landscape asking for information, but that's a continuous exchange of information between the landscape and our landscape, our background from what we would like to do with this, lands uh, with this landscape. I will show now, after to, to show you some of these uh, uh, maps, I would like to show you two projects. Uh, um, one is in, uh, one is about the ex area Falk in Milan. We, we, this is not a, a real project. The uh, the, the uh, administration of this of Sesto San Giovanni near Milan asked us to help them to understand what to do with the with this big park they had to build in this abandoned uh, industrial site. So we proposed something. We won some some uh, awards with this with this for the quality of this um, idea, but I don't think they will use this idea to develop or to change this ex Aria Falk. But um, uh, you know, Aria Falk is uh, is this place in which we have this huge relics. After cleaning or just uh, removing some of these industrial buildings, few of them still are there. And two of these are the, 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 the building called it T3 and the other one called it T5. And these are two important relics. And not, we don't have just only the, 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 the relics of buildings. We have these relics. Uh, of the basement of these uh, buildings, of these industrial buildings. And you know, the first, the, the Renzo Piano did the first, the second, and the third master plan for the, for the entire area, then he stopped. And when we arrived, there, were, there was in, um, um, a London office making the, the, the development, the um, final, uh, design of this of this site, and when Renzo Piano looked at this basement, uh, he was very uh, he he loved these things, and he called it this Vasque Pompei. So for for him, these were relics like uh, we can see in Pompeii. But I found this beautiful. I found this beautiful photo, and uh, this is the the interior of the T five. Uh, and what I really liked from this from this uh, building was the relationship. So, in the previous pictures, we could see just only the buildings or the relics of the basements. So the the, the relics of buildings or the relics of basement. But in these photos, we have the buildings and the relics inside. We have the upper and underground uh, landscape. And so from, from, from 
this idea to have an upper landscape and an underground landscape, I drew these two, uh, uh, these two drawings. This is the T5 and this is the T3. So I took a picture of this T5, I transformed it, and then I added my landscape uh, underground. So, and in the same way, we started to develop our relationship with the site. So these are maps, again, how to engage these elements, how to create the, the relationship between us and these relics. And we did these two maps. This was, these were the first pictures we, uh, we did, the first um, maps we did. Maps, for me, is not just only a plan. This is not a side plan or representing something from a book. I think sections, I think, I think um, views, perspectives can be maps. So this, this is the, this is the, um, the site. And here there is the rally station, and here in this moment, Renzo Piano is building a, a bridge rally station here. He decided to do a big access. His, his project was to do this big access here. From this part, there was the urban development, and for this part, the, the, there was a big uh, uh, urban park. And the in this land in this master plan, this park was more like a, a park from the, the from the from two centuries ago, a beautiful park with promenades and so on and so on. But it was a huge park, and the the problem was how to maintain this park, how to. Uh, Yes, to, 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 to maintain this park during, during, the, during the time. So what we thought when we uh, decided to, to give them a, propo a proposal about this, you can see here we have the urban, the urban uh, uh, development. So what we thought to do, so this is the main axis, we wanted to create in this part a strong, a strong element made by gardens. So these are gardens. And we would like to do these gardens to compete with the urban, the new urban fabric here. We had to close this, this access. We don't have to, we thought it was not necessary to open this part of the access directly to this huge urban park. So we decided to create this barrier, but it is not a barrier, this edge. We created this edge, and this edge is a dynamic edge capable to connect the, the urban fabrics with the, with the landscape. And this was the master plan we did, the site plan we did. So you see, we have this very important uh, relics. So T3, Laminatoyo, Olmec, and T5. And this is the access designed by, by Renzo Piano. And we took this like it is. And we added this strong gardens next to this axis. To contain the space and to deal with this, with this. If the 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 range of access ended into these buildings, we decided to build to uh, change the direction of this access and to create the the this this kind of promenade. So gardens. So we decided to design the gardens, and these gardens create the connection between the, the urban fabric and as we said before and the, and the new park and this this so uh, sorry before before to continue to this i would like to uh, um, so uh, and so after the, the 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 gardens here we added some urban uh, gardens here 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 and here, and, and then some big urban forest. 
connecting the 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 this site with the with the other part of the city here 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 so in this way we have just one small element to maintain that is the gardens here we have this uh, urban forest we our idea was to close this urban forest for 20 years and to use just for didactical um, for schools and schools could come during these 20 years to see how a forest a urban forest can grow up and so without a strong maintenance and then we have the urban orchards so we decided to give to the population who was under the pressure of this industrial site for years the way to use this space for for uh, their activities so the gardens as we say these are the the diagram of the gardens and these are some some specific nodes along this axis with these gardens usually these gardens are quite closed so the, there is a barrier it is not a strong barrier but it is a barrier that is a, an important edge and then as you see we we like to add some traces inside of the like this landscape we we like to put some symbols and this is a view of the success this is a view of these gardens you see this but we like not to use um, uh, uh, we like not to use the uh, many renderings or um, uh, views made by Lumia or some other uh, some other uh, um, okay you understand me so we like to we like to we like to to write so we 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 need to see what we need to see it is not just to see everything because i will try to explain you that I will try to explain you in, an, in this uh, second project. I will show you why I think that uh, today renderings are like photos. They are not renderings, they are photos. In this case, we don't fix one moment. We open the, the view. We open the view to be able to uh, uh, change uh, itself, to, to create the kind of empathy with people who see this view, so to understand how this, this landscape could be really very dynamic. And then these are some small objects uh, we, we usually like to add in our, in our design. This is another typology of gardens. And so we have this part of the project, so we can see we developed some activities for these two parts. In the Laminatoyo, we have a sport fields with many different activities because this building is very long and you see the very long and high and we decided to, to add this, to add this, this um, uh, sport path and to connect this uh, building with the sport facilities. And we really like to show this idea through this through this um, views in this case we thought we are in the three in t3 and we thought that it was possible to walk along this different elevation here so we decided that this plan was a kind of map of the entire site so people from here they can see the map of the entire site of of um, the ex area falk Omic with this idea to connect the orchards with uh, uh, with um, uh, weekly markets. So agriculture and this uh, are connected with this building. And then we have the um, orchards 
So we have these orchards with these objects inside of the or orchards. So those this elements are part of the orchards because they create the geometry, the, the geography of these orchards. When you arrive in a point, you can recognize this orchard because you have this pergola or you have this element. We copied this from Turinscape. My, my wife copied this from Turinscape. And, and so when, when you are inside of this space made by these orchards, you, you feel how to orientate yourself inside of this space. And this is the T5, and you, we can see the, the main axis with the, with, the, with the gardens arriving till the T5. We had the, the strong uh, discussions about this T5. Uh, so we create this this kind of uh, 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 landscape here to connect this this axis with the T5, and we suggest that to use one of this first part of the T5 to create a kind of landscape inside of the of the building. So the landscape to invade the, the, we wanted to, to, to be honest, our first idea was to, to, so we have this T5 like this. The first idea I had, I suggested them and they said, no, it is not possible to do this. They have to do a big shopping mall. I don't know why, but the big shop, shopping mall and so on and so on. Because I suggested just to create the forest, a big forest inside, nothing more than a big forest nothing, a big forest. And this was just the, the final uh, solution about this big forest. But I think this big forest should be an incredible iconic element that they can sell to everybody in the world. Because to have this big building, I think 100 meters, 100 meters wide and two or five or two or three meters long and having inside of this a big forest, it could be an, an incredible nice uh, iconic um, element. And then we have the forest, the urban forest. And here we were very precise and to understand which kind of species can, can we could use. Uh, and easy to grow up in these places. And after 20 years, this, this should be the, um, the final resort. In 20 years, this is a real, this is a real picture. And then what we decided to do is to create a diagram, a geometry with this, with this landmarks, sculptures, portali, gates, and so on. So we did some diagrams in which it was possible to understand where these elements could be placed. So this, this was a big project, the project, a big research, we can say, an idea of, of, of space. And now we, now we are doing, we are working on a small garden for this international uh, horticultural exposition in uh, Yanzhou uh, in China. And the, the, um, the main issue of this uh, exhibition uh, of this uh, exhibition is Green City, Half City. Well, now this is everywhere. So this is the uh, typical Chinese master plan of the garden, side plan of this uh, um, exposition. This is a beautiful aerial view, a picture of this aerial view, of the aerial view of the, of the, of this garden. So they, we have this small area, B5, B10, B10 is around 2000 meters square, no more. So in China, I visited many times China. I mean, I know uh, I visited many cities in China. And I drew, and some drawings are in my book. Some drawings from China are, from, are in my book. And one of this, uh, no, two of these are about how to redo, redraw, how to represent the memory I had 
from the visiting of these Chinese gardens, how to represent this beautiful, incredible space that it is dynamic, it is infinite, it is, in, it is many, many different things in which the beauty of these gardens is in every details and so on. So I started to, so this, how they, how I started to do these drawings is just, I started with this simple line. And for me, this line was, was about the buildings you can have in these gardens. And these, usually these buildings are open to the, to the landscape. So this is, this is a kind of ideogram of this, of this landscape. So the pictogram is, all this part here, and then we can see this these elements representing the different uh, beautiful traces you can find in Chinese garden. But I wanted to represent the Chinese garden not just only from plants, but I wanted to enter into this into this beautiful landscape. So I imagine how to draw uh, 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 a Chinese landscape. And what I really like from Chinese gardens is that if in the past they wrote a poem, they painted the, the, a, a painting, and then they built these gardens, these traditional gardens. This is an incredible, beautiful project process in, 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 in thinking about uh, landscape. So that, uh, starting from this, from this idea of spaces and creating this small and having in my mind this idea to change direction to do something like this, I wrote this this kind of first sketch, and then I tried to do I tried to do uh, a kind of three uh, D. Uh, idea of spaces with this with this signs then i improved a little bit the entrance the exit how to connect these things together and then i did this first sketch organizing the the the, the, the garden with this four small gardens and so these are the four uh, medium gardens and then we have this micro gardens because this garden is made with the city of Bologna, or better, with the with some some small cities near Bologna, and so does the small gardens represents the represent the the these ten cities. So walls. I try to understand how to write the how to represent the first idea of these gardens. We, and we wanted to create walls, and so we decided to do this kind of ecological walls. These are the hard surface of the garden. And then they asked us to do some pavilions. So we did this, this, this kind of, we tried to, to do this kind of pavilions like this. Um, rethinking the the pavilions from China, they they have this kind of sections like this. So we cut this and we use this this kind of uh, shape, uh, the landform. So this is the the final master plan, the final site site plan, and you can see inside of this the gardens of the cities, of the different cities. So these are walls. We started to understand how to write, how to create um, uh, identities through these walls. And then we did these pictures. These are not renderings. These are not drawings. These are photos. I call these photos because they are just, they fix one moment. These are not I really don't like this, but they are useful. They are beautiful and useful to to present projects. And I asked my Chinese students to help me to do these things, former Chinese students, and Chinese are very good in making this kind of drawings. So this is the this was this was this is the entrance. Then we enter inside of the garden. This is from above. And walking, you have some uh, views, surprises. 
you have some some moments in which in which you can see something. You don't see the entire the entire the garden in one glance, but you have to experience the gardens and you have to enter into these gardens. And we have these walls with us ornaments. And this is the, 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 the diagrams with the different cities inside. And we want to create these micro, micro gardens, making this kind of map. So this is a piece of the urban fabric of these small cities. And then we want to create the geography of this, thinking and explain where they are, how they are orientated, and so on and so on. So this is a concrete surface. The materials are very simple. This is a concrete surface, concrete black surface of, of the paving. And so you can see here this, this kind of gardens. Oh, this kind of gardens like this. So th these are kind of abstract uh, uh, sculptures. In this in this way, we 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 like working in which the art is not just about sculptures. The art into the landscape is not just sculptures added into the garden, but the garden itself is. The details of gardens are pieces of art, and this this kind of abstract sculptures is part of this of this idea um, it, 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 the, this this is the this is the garden from above and but um, how to say i i am i i feel i am a professor or a kind of professor and sometimes i discover that my students are much better than professors. So I would like to present for the last uh, project. So we finished a few slides more. I would like to present this project made by this Chinese student, Jin Jiang Zheng. I called him the tall because he was a very tall Chinese. It was a, a studio I made in Milan because Sara helped me with something. So I did this this the the studio in Milan and in Porta Genoa, and this students won and a, this is one of my students winning uh, ASLA award in 2017. So I I like to I like to work with them using this uh, idea of verbal drawings or map of ideas. I ask them to collect the ideas in one map. So it is a treasure map, a map from which they can, then they can take some uh, traces. And I usually ask them to do this before, before visiting the site. So this map is made before visiting the site. I think it is an important exercise because you can see things you cannot see. So, and he worked with this idea of tra traversing Milan. So he, he uh, the, the reading the history of the, the uh, uh, um, of the main cathedral, the Duomo in, in Milan, he uh, started the way how people uh, uh, use uh, the stones from outside and bringing the stones into the water channels to build the, 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 the Duomo. This is, this is a simple, this is a simple diagram. Uh, uh, this is the site, it, it is, it is a, a railway station in Milan. And then we zoom into this, into this space and he did this very ecological landscape in this part with this all the details. And you can see, I asked them not to write, not to draw one singular drawings, but to speak about the drawings, to 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 write with the drawings, and not just to show drawings to be seen. And this is the uh, this is the other this is the other side of the of the. Uh, I don't want to explain the project because it is very complex, but I really like what he did with this beautiful 
um, views. For me, these views are um, maps because we don't see everything, but we see just what we have to see, or we see what the designers decided that it is the better, the, are the, the designer decided which kind of elements, things, atmosphere are the best to show for, for us. And the, 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 the quality of these drawings, I really think, are, are incredible, powerful. And these are some photos of the, of the models, mm -hmm. um, a way to take photos of the models. Okay, done. I, I did. I finished. Thanks a lot for, for, for the for staying with, uh, with me. Thank you, Valerio. Thank you very much by our side. And I think now is the moment of the virtual applause from the chat for your very fascinating and um, lecture you want to, to share uh, with, with us. And uh, I want just to give uh, some, um, some words before opening the debate. We have, done, we have received some uh, questions and comments. Uh, the first one is, uh, is first comment is my comment is about a thank, very special thanking because uh, through imagination and through your drawings, uh, through your words, uh, you have uh, let us to, to travel a bit. In this period, we are closed in our offices, in our homes, and we have uh, discovered some parts of uh, African uh, desert, uh, the island in New York. Always uh, not with the touristic way, I mean, but uh, always uh, looking at and selecting uh, uh, the, the components of, of the landscape. This is, was uh, fantastic because the, 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 the word you have decided as title of the conference itself, which is imagination, is something that uh, we need to take uh, care and to share with students and and so on. This is uh, this is uh, fantastic. Um, before opening the the the, the, the debate, uh, I want also to um, to ask you something about if you want, because it's quite strange. But I'm uh, really happy about it uh, to to talk for uh, more or less for an hour without talking about coronavirus uh, pandemic and so on. So yeah, thank you also for this one. But uh, you have uh, uh, made a sort of index of different type of the city, which is the type of city we are living through in this uh, period. If you have thought about it, or maybe uh, you are not interested in it. No, the, the, um, the, um... So I was I was surprised in a way. I was surprised, or I don't know if surprise is the good word, but it was amazing to see many people posting and sharing photos with blue sea, uh, deers or birds in the city into the cities. Or it's, uh, but to see people sharing the fish into the Laguna of Venice. And so the people were surprised that nature is next to us. That, that was the, the, so I discovered that people, I don't know, it seems that people the, uh, don't remind that, that nature is just next to us. And nature is waiting. We 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 move away. So the the the, the um, that is that is the main message I think from this period. People were surprised by nature is next to us, and it is ready to occupy our spaces if we start shrinking our spaces nature is ready to to organize itself to occupy again our spaces in my city there were the dolphins into the port it it, it was incredible beautiful experience so the nature is there and people didn't understand that nature was next 
is next to us. So what we have to understand, I think, what do we have to use from these experiences to open the city to the nature? No, this is not my, this is not, uh, um, uh, how to say, just my opinion. This is a common opinion we share many times, architects, landscape, especially landscape architects, ecologists. We need to open our cities in our in, in uh, through the uh, to the nature. So many many probably I don't know, but uh, two months ago, three months ago, all the studies, all the research about city saying was saying that in the future, population will live into the city. I think more than 80% of population will live in the cities and they will not experience the nature itself. So this, this was the main, the main goal. This is the main goal we have to understand better what it means to, end, to share the, the, the nature with the city. And then what is city? What is city? Uh, some the last time I saw a conference with um, uh, I don't remember names, but they they uh, the 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 um, Liyosaki wrote this beautiful yeah. book about uh, cities, and he said they prefer the Italian uh, the Italian cities. I agree with him. Yeah. But probably. What is the Italian city? What what is the what is the Italian city? We have museums. Yes, Venice, the center city of Venice, is a museum. It is not a city anymore. Um, many many small centers of cities are just Florence. is not a city. It is a museum. A big as a museum. So which kind of Italian city? And then we have so many different typologies of cities that it is quite strange to use the, the, this, this idea to say the Italian cities. I don't know. I'm, I am much open to many different things. Italian cities are, for me, Italian cities are this incredible, horrible um, suburbs we invented in the last uh, century, so the, 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 we have to we have to give to this cities to this part of cities an identity. Maybe if we can do this, and then we have the cities. They in China they are building huge cities, and we are just out of this debate because we didn't organize ourselves to. Okay, thank you very much for this um, uh, answer. I, I want to shift a bit uh, because we are receiving some uh, questions and comments by students. Some of them, well, all of them, uh, also us, uh, are uh, making your compliments for your fantastic uh, drawings. So, Professoressa Protasoni will be the most represented uh, uh, professor in the school because he will receive uh, one of it. <laughs> uh, some of the students uh, are uh, asking you about also technical questions. One of it, Hadi, uh, is uh, discussing about as a landscape architect, what uh, can you suggest as the first step you consider designing uh, uh, trees, for example, or vegetation? Uh, she, he asked, uh, uh, should we notice about area climate and weather? For example, if we want to design one of your projects in another part of the world, how can we manage with it? So that, that is that is if you read my if you read my if you read my book, The City of Imagination, I speak about um, I speak about uh, imperfections and precision. These two words, it seems they are completely different to each other, but they stay together. So imperfection is when you imagine, when you try to invent something. Precision is when this invention has to be a design. And when you uh, design with plants, you have to be absolutely uh, correct in choosing plants, in choosing the good trees, in choosing everything. But without being 
without thinking that the ecology we create with plants and trees is unique. There are many ecologists that uh, Olin, uh, Bachkin, and many others saying that ecology is a surprise. Ecology is, uh, is not something we can fix in one moment. We cannot fix ecology in one picture, in one photos in which, in which we have a butterfly and happy little kids with balloons. The ecology is something more. So we have to be precise and with our imagination that two things can create a kind of dynamic ecology resist in our cities because the ecology we have to put in our cities, not the ecology we can see in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the natural environment, we can say like this, but it is an ecology that needs to be created, imagined uh, in a different way. And I think this idea that ecology is, not, is dynamic, surprise, so, so you can have a lot of surprise when you do um, a new ecology, a new piece of ecology inside of cities. Okay, we have a question from Lisana. Well, it's a very brief question, but I guess we can talk for it uh, about uh, two hours or three hours. Hi, Valerio. Your drawings are impressive. Thank you for sharing them. What type of drawing practices would you recommend for us to improve our techniques and imaginative skills? That is, uh, um, uh, so that's, uh, I teach representation uh, in, in, in USA. And what I like to, many times I like to see not the students who are very good in, in, in hand drawings. I like very much that students that are not very good in hand drawings. And so, but just to answer, I really like hand drawings. I really like that it is necessary to think with our hands. Because our mind is not enough to think and to imagine. We really need to think and imagine with our hands. It is, hands. It is, it is impossible not to think that our hands is part of our imagination. So when I, I see them, so when I was younger, so I was envious about many other people who were able to, to draw perfect things, uh, very well done. And I struggled for many years because I wasn't able to, to reach that kind of precision. So I, I really say, okay, maybe I have to reach an, another kind of precision that is the imperfection of imagination. So, you, so hand drawings are the base in my process. Everything I think is translated with hand drawings and then these hand drawings give me feedback to my imagination. So there's, there's not one way. The, the mind give, feed, give information to the hands and then, no. The mind give the information to the hands and the hands give back the information to the minds and sometimes the hands give some information to the minds. So for this reason, I think this relationship with it, and this is something you do making exercises. That is the 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 um, the secret is in doing this not each day because every day because it is impossible and maybe stupid, but you 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 don't have to stop to exercise your your this relationship between mind and hand. And at the same time, when 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 someone wants to go to the Olympic game and run for 100 meters, 100 meters is 10, 10 seconds, but to reach 10 seconds, you have to try and you have to exercise a lot. It is exactly the same with imagination. 
Okay, I, I want to sorry with uh, some students because uh, we are receiving a lot of, of questions that we cannot uh, discuss uh, everyone with Valerio, or maybe we can also send you an email and uh, maybe if you have time, if you want, we can uh, share. So I'm just uh, skipping some of, some of them. Uh, I have a very uh, interesting, uh, I guess, and curious uh, comment by Xia Wan Wu, who is uh, a Chinese student. And is discussing he or she? Sorry, I don't know. <laughs> discussing about uh, your uh, design for Yang Zhu. With the uh, I'm really wonder when you design Yang Yang Zhu with the consideration of Chinese gardens. Have you thought about the property of Chinese gardens? It was private for the scholar of the emperor. emperor. Now to make this uh, architecture symbolic public, how to conserve this question of property? So how to deal? Uh, the question of property with the partial quality you want to add of the, your design. That is, that is, I think it is simple to answer to this question. So I, I visited many Chinese gardens and some days it was impossible to enter in these gardens because they were full of people, full of people, an incredible amount of people. So the beauty that was produced just for a few people, for a few people, so the owners or someone in the fam family of the owner can enjoy the beauty of these gardens. Right now, the beauty is for everybody. And I think the, the, the I think I think this this idea to open this beauty for everybody is an important thing. The the problem is that sometimes I saw a lot of people just there taking pictures. So um, that 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 was my that was my uh, idea when I visited these gardens. These gardens are not just only for Private. So, how to translate that beauty made for few people in a beauty or in a beauty, a uh, kind of beauty, a kind of aesthetics for for everybody? How to how to involve this? How to open these gardens from the beginning? You know, the traditional Chinese gardens were open at the end or just in the last few years. But how to how to think about this? incredible spaces but made by elements made by uh, divisions made by relationships made by different views uh, for everybody and that that is i think uh, the, 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 and then, and then the problem is that you cannot just paint and someone build your your garden, so you have to deal with some regulations and so on and so on. So this is an important passage be between from the private garden and the open public garden. Okay, quite uh, similar I mean, on the same line is the comment by Alessandro. Well, it starts from a very general reflection and question. Do you think that there is still a clear distinction between architecture, landscape architecture, and urbanism. But the second question maybe is, is uh, I mean, is more focused on the on your topic. Which are, in your opinion, the instruments to design the public spaces of the future? So that that is the if um, if we can compete with with the um, so um, a landscape. Architects, I have an opinion. I don't know if it is correct. Someone, some architects told me I am completely crazy. And, but I think the landscape architects are the Renaissance architects, the Rena Renaissance contemporary architects, because for many, many years, architects just spend their energy to do beautiful houses beautiful swimming pools and so on and so on. And landscape architects started to deal with ecology. McCarthy started dealing with ecology, uh, with design, uh, Peter Walker and many others. And now I think the landscape architects have a vision that is much more holistic 
than architects or engineers or many other many other people. So I really think that landscape architects can deal with architecture, with the with the with the, with the urban design and in many, many other in many other fields, uh, giving to this to this spaces a kind of poetry that I don't think it is easy to see again poetry in our spaces and I think the I, I agree with John Dixon Hunt when he says that we need more poetry in our landscape architecture and I uh, if I can say what is the future of landscape architecture or designing uh, landscape is to put more poetry. Uh, we try to do this connecting uh, abstract art, art and landscape in one unique whole uh, um, process. Okay, do you agree to have uh, the last question? Mm. Okay. Yes, sure. By Fernando. Uh, well, thank you very much for your lecture. I have a question concerning your territorial mapping, which is uh, a process and something uh, strongly stressed in your uh, in your uh, speech. Do you give equal importance to the to what uh, he calls a changing aspect of it? So evolution in time on during the season, and maybe I can add also the social activities within the spaces and its physical qualities. So maybe how the interaction of ma mapping is with physical reality and with uh, mobile flows and dynamics of life within it, them. The, the, uh, the, um, so all the maps you, you, you see during this, this very short communication are maps from competitions and we, we won all, almost we won all of them. Uh, because this is the first step. So this, 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 the, 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 this kind of territorial map is not a territorial map. It is a, a map in which you put together your ideas and the landscape in one unique element. And then this is the first step in which we deal with time. So. I have an idea of time. You know? When we talk about time in landscape, we use just time, but we don't have to use time, just only time. I think we have to use, so Einstein put together space and time. Space, time and activity is a unique word in landscape. No, and we really change our time when we, and this is what we what we do in our, what we try to do in our project. We change time, but so I, I I don't I don't I don't care a lot about the time of seasons and the leaves falling down and flowers during the spring and so on and so on and so on. This is this is something that nature gave gives to us so it is it is not our design so we cannot decide that during the summer we 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 have a kind of particular tree without leaves you know the the time we are thinking about is a time made by space and people and activities there are some beautiful there are some beautiful sketches that van gogh's did at the beginning of his career, this these sketches are beautiful because you can see very simple, very simple. They, they are very simple sketches in which you have some trees and then the monument. The real meme. We why we why, the, the, the monument, the church, or something like this. And through the sketch, you really can see the time because you you know that. When you pass from a line of trees made by five trees, you spend, I don't know, 20 minutes. When you 
are in front of the church, the time stops. It is not possible to calculate how much time we can stay in front of the church if we don't do anything. So in that sketch, it is possible to see and to realize the time we can spend using that landscape. So time is in relationship with what we do. We, if we do a bench without the back, we have to understand that people can stay there for five minutes, probably no more. But if you put the bench with the back and people can relax in this, in this bench, we are changing the time how to use this, this bench. And we think that people can stay there more than five minutes. They can read something, they can eat something, they can do activities relaxing and staying in that place. If we put a bench under a tree, probably that is, there is a beautiful painting with people under the tree made by Van Gogh. And really you can, you can understand the time that people can spend under the tree sitting on that bench. So, and then there is this painting with this people sitting in this, in this bench and then two people passing. And that is, you can perceive the different time you can create in your landscape. So the time of people passing is a kind of time. The time the people use sitting in a bench is another kind of time. Exactly the same what Einstein say. Time is related with something that happened. Anaximander, that was this philosopher, who I think 2,500 years ago, he said that the, the time exists when things move, when things move. If everything is stopped, time doesn't exist. But if I move from my set to another set, I am producing time. If we stay here talking, we are producing time and we can perceive this time. So Anaximander said that time when things moves, the time govern all these things. The times give meaning to to this to this to this moving to this to this movements to this activities. That is something I really like in into. So you see the the the, the territorial maps, the maps of ideas. That is the first time how to approach the landscape. Then you go into the the, the design of landscape. And there you can have another kind of time and you can decide how people can perceive time when they use your landscape, when they use your design. I, I believe in this. I, I really believe in it, in, in this kind of process. Probably it is no one uh, talk or just few people talk about these things, but I really think that the time is related to spaces and activities in, in landscape. Okay, I guess uh, we can uh, move on uh, with the conclusion before giving maybe the, the, the last floor to Sara Protasone to, to, to say hello. I want just uh, uh, to add another point. You haven't talked uh, about coronavirus and that's fantastic. Uh, you haven't talked, or at least I cannot see a sort of ethical approach to the question of landscape and trees and everything. How can you feel or how can you um, think about uh, this uh, prevailing idea that to put trees everywhere in architecture in the city is something ethical, is something good? Uh, instead, your trees or your vision of, of nature is something very different is strongly uh, conflicting in a certain way with, uh, with the city, with the artificiality, but without an ethic behind it. So I didn't show some projects we did about architecture buildings. Sometimes we do some, some buildings. So for example, one of this was this uh, quite famous uh, big uh, competition about the innovative schools they did this competition uh, a few years ago in which 
I don't know, 1,500 architects participated, to, groups participated to this, to this big competition in Italy. Um, and, and we won, the, the, we won this, this competition because really we didn't put trees on the buildings, but we created the relationship between trees and the building. A good relationship. It was not just to uh, write, say, if you do some mistakes, you put the, the climbing uh, vegetations on your uh, mistakes. So we, we didn't want to cover the building. The building is there, but it is not the building because the buildings without the landscape, it doesn't have any meaning and any reason. And the landscape without the buildings, it is exactly the same. So it was not just to build a building and then to put some vegetation on top of the buildings to create this ecological idea of buildings. We really need to create relationships that are equal. So the landscape is not just a wallpaper you, you can put everywhere. And sometimes uh, uh, landscape architects are part of this strange um, process in which architects can do big, big projects using materials and so on and so on. Then, then um, uh, everything seems ecological because you put some cover with with with, with trees. That is that is strange. I really. I really don't like, but if someone asked me to put some trees on a building, I will do. So I, I don't know how to say it. The ethic is something I really, I don't, I, um, so I have my opinions and probably people knows my opinions and no one asked me to put some trees on, on their buildings. But if someone asked me to put some trees on the buildings, probably I will do. Because I don't know, ethics for us is a strange word. It's a very strange word. But I don't. I I agree with you. I don't. I don't know if this is your opinion, but I don't like when we threw some poor trees and, and, and on on top of. They then they survive because they are much more intelligent than, than us. Plants are very intelligent. Trees are very intelligent. They are not stupid. They are intelligent. I like when Giordano Bruno say that living species, animals, plants have the same our intelligence, but they they don't have hands to they don't have hands to show their intelligence. But a lion is has the same intelligence we have. So this this idea of Giordano Bruno I, I really like very much. Okay, thank you, Valerio, very much. Now, we are all curious to know which is the drawings uh, you will give to Professoressa Protasoni. <laughs> no, you, not, you will not do it also this time, I know it. It will never happen. <laughs> if we do an exhibition in Milan, I can give her the, the big painting. This is what I have to organize. Now, with Michele, we will manage to do it. At least now, yeah. one week virtual drawings in order we can use as backdrop for our virtual screen. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks a lot, Valerio. The, uh, also for uh, this conclusion, which is in a way dangerous for the souls of our students, this idea of saying about ethics, we cannot really say the final words, but I think also this is the right uh, approach in relation to the landscape questions and also a lot of ideological pressures on the landscape questions that sometimes it is also misused by the media and also by the political power. It's a question, it's open and we'll be, we will open, we will organize a discussion about this involving uh, some people who have things to do about this. Uh, now you have to say something, Valerio. No, I wanted to add something about ethic because sometimes we are against some projects 
because we we are just a little bit envious that someone else did that project. So ethics is is a strange word. So it is not easy to to understand very well the uh, the, uh, the, the 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 border between ethic and something else. So it is it is difficult. It's not easy. But we have to have an ethic. We have to have yes. an ethic. Yes. So I think now we will finish. And I say hello to all the participants. Today we were almost about 90, but not yet. We have to do against again our efforts about someone this. else to win. Uh, someone someone <laughs> else will win. The... We will let you know if someone got more public than you. And so <laughs> So thanks again, and I say hello to everyone. Bye, until next week, we will have the next uh, conference. Thank you very thanks much. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye. Grazie, Adele, ciao.